This week on Performance TV, Joe and Kathy get the lowdown on some high-performance chassis. And later on, we explore ways to work comfortably and how to inflate your workspace. Next on Performance TV. Welcome to this week's Performance TV. You know, you had your dream car when you were a kid and you go out and you buy it and you come to find out that that 69 Mustang, well, it doesn't feel quite as good as what you remember it back in the day. And that's why we brought in Jeff from Schwartz Performance. Jeff, we're gonna be able to get that 69 Mustang or our Camaro or whatever and make it drive like a modern day car. And you've been doing racing and stuff for a very long time. Tell us how you got started in this. Well, I always liked uh, cars that handled. I uh, road raced Corvettes and so forth, and I love luxury cars. So I always appreciated a car that rode good and handled well. You know, and, and like I mentioned, you get back into that car you thought was just the greatest thing since sliced bread, and it doesn't drive anything like you rem thought you remembered it did. But you guys can change all of that. Yeah, absolutely. We came up with our uh, bolt-in G machine chassis for unibody cars. So a lot of people didn't think you could do stuff like that, just like street rods. I mean, I thought that was, you know, you could do chassis for those, but you can do them for any of the unibodies? Uh, yeah, and actually we were the first to introduce a muscle car chassis in uh, 2006. And uh, then we went on to do our unibody chassis. So basically we have a product that bolts into a unibody car without having to cut the floor out of the car. Yeah, because that makes a big difference. I mean, we're talking about, you know, you could be spending a ton of money to do something like that, but not with what you guys have. Right, and with today's modern engines, they have so much horsepower that the old unibody structure can't really handle the forces that you know, we have available to us nowadays. Well, you know, people might take a look at this and say, well, how is that gonna be strong enough? But that's because this works in conjunction with what you're installing it into. Correct, yeah, our chassis bolts to the existing unibody structure and by marrying the two together, you get a, a strong uh, basis for a foundation to handle the high horsepower of today's modern engines. Well, you're talking about horsepower and obviously with your racing background, people might take a, a look at this and go, no, wait a minute, I don't really want that stiff ride. So do we have to worry about that? Well, as I mentioned, I always appreciated cars with uh, good ride quality and uh, by uh, my experience racing motocross and road racing cars, I uh, became an expert on suspension and I can tell when a car is riding good and when it doesn't ride good, what we need to do to tweak it. So we've developed our products uh, around smooth ride quality. Okay. And you know, I'm gonna take, ask about the shocks. Don't you think those are a little long maybe? Or do people ask that? Uh, that is a common question, but most uh, suspensions for uh, street rods and companies that have taken their street rod products and adapted them to muscle cars use a tiny short shock that's based on a Mustang II type suspension and once you get it set at a ride height that's attractive it doesn't have any shock travel left so we engineered our chassis with longer shocks so it has plenty of suspension travel even at a lowered ride height which uh, gives you a smooth ride down the road. You know and then I'm gonna look right into the the A-arms I mean you guys have thought of everything here. Yeah, I mean, uh, A-arms uh, are a, an area where there's a lot of friction. Uh, the control arm bushings bind. Right. And uh, what we've done is added uh, needle bearings with a grease fitting so it moves real freely and absorbs even the mo most minor imperfections in the road surface. Well, we have a, the Mustang here, but you guys, what is it? How many different uh, chassis do you have? Uh, we're up to 29 different models 29. of bolt-in chassis. Wow, give us some examples of some of the other ones. Well, pretty much all the muscle cars, uh, including, you know, Chevelles and Cudas and uh, Chargers and Roadrunners, along with some classic trucks, Tri-5 Chevys. Uh, a real popular one is the G-body cars, which is uh, General Motors 78 to 88, uh, Cutlasses and Regals and Monte Carlos, that sort of thing. Absolutely. And can someone do this type of thing at, say they're pretty handy? Would they be able to do this at home? And if, if so, how long does it usually take? Uh, many customers do buy our chassis for install at home. And on a typical uh, bolt-in chassis, like a Chevelle, for example, that had a full frame, it would take maybe uh, you know the best part of a day. 
uh, on a unibody chassis where there's a little bit of cutting and welding involved, you know, maybe a day, day and a half. Well, I tell you what, now we're going to be able to have our classic muscle car with the ride and feel of a modern vehicle to go along with everything else. It's cool that you've upgraded. We're going to find out a little bit later on in the show when we check in with Dale and Joe about how some of this all works. But first, we'll have more Performance TV right after this. Performance TV is brought to you by rockauto.com. All the parts your car will ever need. Stow and Show, show off that beautiful bumper. Twisted Pro All-Terrain, beautiful by day, beast by night. And by Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. Welcome back to Performance TV. On a previous episode, we learned all about the car capsule showcase and outdoor showcase. Well, Phil is back with something even bigger and more impressive. Phil, this thing is awesome. What are we in? Well, this is our pro station. It's for the pro and the go. So if you're a mobile detailer, um, you do window tinting, vehicle wrap, paintless dent repair, vehicle restoration, and you need a portable place to work, this is it. This structure inflates in less than 15 minutes and gives you the portability and affordability on the job or at your shop. You need a clean space to work. Now, a lot of space in here. Let's run down the list of different people who can benefit from this. I'm immediately thinking about the guy who's got a space, but maybe there's dirty work going on in that space, and he wants to kind of segregate clean work, interior work, under hood work, or paint and body work, like polishing or something like that. Right. Well, like I said, some of the restoration guys already buy from us. I mean, imagine you're working on the inner shop, grinding, welding, sanding, and you're trying to put uh, the car together, put the final assembly, the interior. Well, with this, you pull the car in, bring your components in. You got two side doors, drop the main door, zip it up, you're sealed, and you got fresh air all the time while you're working in here, and it's filtered to keep out the dirt and the dust. Let's talk a little bit about that. You're out on a lot. Maybe it's a dirt or sand lot. There's parked cars all around. Maybe you're bringing your job, tinting windows or whatever you're doing to that location. You get filtered air, so dust kicks up outside. You're climate controlled and clean on the inside. That's it, and plus with the opaque top, it's gonna keep that sun from cooking you while you're working. I mean, obviously if it's a hot day, it's, it's gonna be warm, but you don't have that direct sunlight, not only on you, but the vehicle you're trying to work on. Now there's a lot of space in here. How big is this thing? We got the hood open, we can move all around the car, we could do a lot of different things on this machine. This is 14 by 25, and it's uh, seven foot tall at the wall height, and 10 foot at the eave. So it, it gives you a lot of flexibility. I mean, a full-size Ford pickup in here, no problem. 15 minutes to inflate, how long to take down? About the same, you know, it's gonna take about the same to deflate it, maybe another five, seven minutes to roll it up. Now I'm seeing a lot of people uh, with finish adjustments, uh, like different uh, coatings you put on bodywork. Well, you have to do that in an absolutely immaculate area. Any dust gets into it, it's gonna be permanent. So I would imagine a lot of people who do that kind of work think this is a good idea. And I can't get over how strong it is. Well, the ceramic coating guys, that's, they're on it. I mean, because it has to be meticulous when they do that. And the vehicle wrap guys too, because if they're laying wrap over it and there's something on there, it's, it's a major deal to take all that off and start over again. So again, they bring their components in, pressurize it, they're good to go. It's works with positive air pressure, so air's coming in and it's always leaking out the zippers. Now it is huge uh, when it's inflated. How big is it when we've got it rolled up and can we fit it in the back of a pickup? You can fit this in a trunk, I mean a good size trunk, but I mean it, it rolls up to about say 40 inches by 24 by 24, weighs a couple hundred pounds, 200 pounds. So this is directed at the entrepreneur who's on the go, wants to go mobile business, automotive industry, and have themselves an area that is climate controlled and yet sturdy and strong. And that's one element of it that I'm very surprised about, exactly how strong this thing is. Yeah, it's, it's extremely strong. People don't realize, you know, the power of air pressure. There's actually only less, less than three PSI in all these tubes. But 
you or me could get on the top of this thing and sit there. I mean, it's, it's that strong. <laughs> yeah, as we have seen in the past. Now our Corvette has got the hood up. We could do all kinds of work. What about leaks though on the mat? Like there are chemicals inside this car. There's oils, there's gas. Is there anything in this car that could do any kind of damage to this? Anything that comes out of a car is not gonna ruin our base mat. We've never had a problem. So think about oil, transmission fluid, power steering fluid, brake fluid. It's never been a problem, wipes right up. All this PVC is made to our specs and we spent a lot of uh, quality control and time and resources engineering the proper material to build our showcase. I would imagine there are some misconceptions about it. People might see it in a magazine and not really understand exactly how big, sturdy, and useful one of these car capsules can be. Well, it's hard to communicate effectively in an ad all of our products because the strength and the resiliency and everything they do. That's why, you know, a video is the way to go. We got a lot of videos on our website, along we'll have this one. It is spectacular. I'll tell you what, if I had a business, I would definitely have myself a car capsule. For more information, hit the website. They've got all kinds of stuff on there. And for more Performance TV, stick around. We'll be back after this. Performance TV, coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. Welcome back to Performance TV. This old pickup, you'd think it would have plenty of ground clearance, but on a regular creeper, it doesn't. And that's why I don't like using a regular creeper. Not enough ground clearance. And the folks at Magic Creeper are here with a product that's gonna help solve that problem. Tell us about it. Yeah, Joe, uh, we have the Magic Creeper. Um, it's a wheelless mechanics creeper. It's got a special nylon material on the inside so it slides on itself. It gives you about four and a half to five feet of travel. Oh, that is cool. So you can put it on the bare ground and still move around under the vehicle? Absolutely. So it just rolls out underneath the car. You get on top of it and you slide underneath just like you would a regular creeper, but it's just wheelless. So that is going to keep you clean while you work on your car. Now, what is it made of? It's a special nylon on the inside that gets it really slick so that it slides on itself. The outside has a polyurethane outer coating, so it's oil and water resistant. If you do get some oil on it, just some simple grain or degreaser will we'll clean it up nice. Now, obviously, you can't put a regular creeper behind your seat in your car. This looks like it could go everywhere. Yeah, so um, it's best to clean it and keep it rolled up for storage. You can leave it in the shop, leave one at home, leave one in the back of the pickup, or take it with you when you travel, leave it in the camper. Working on cars is a dirty business. Uh, how do you keep this thing clean? Is it going to hold up? Yeah, it's resistant to wear. We suggest that you keep it rolled up and cleaned every time you use it so that when you're ready to use it again, it's ready to go. I love it. I love the extra clearance. And what about this? You've got an emergency kit that comes with the Creeper? So we have another option just aside from the Magic Creeper. We have the emergency kit, which includes the Creeper, and your standard emergency kit items, jumper cables, bungee cords, things like that. Well, this is great. I love everything, but I want to see it demonstrated. Can you show us? I can, absolutely. So again, we like to keep it rolled up so that when you're ready to use it, it's easy to roll out underneath the car. So what you wanna do is roll it out, mostly underneath the car. You're gonna sit on the edge with your back kind of up against the car, roll forward before you go underneath. And let's say you have a tool that you need to take. You can put the tool here next to you. If there's a hose in your way. Wow. You go right over the hose, no problem. And I have my tool here. I can put it back down and bring it back out with me. I have a couple feet side to side. Comes right back out. Wow, Brittany, that is super cool. You went right over the hose. You brought your tools with you. You were able to move around left and right. I think that's what everybody is looking for. We've all been on a regular creeper, and it just won't go where you want it to go. I want to go left. It will not go left. That thing looks like it has got it solved. I exactly. Love it. And you don't have to worry about wheels and hair getting caught in the wheels. Now, we are inside our Performance TV garage. Sometimes when you have to use a creeper, you have to go over gravel, you have to be outside, you have to go over grass, and we have got Kathy outside that is going to show us exactly how it handles it. You know, sometimes you need to work on your vehicle when you're outside or on the side of the road or whatever, and whether it's gravel or grass with mud, if you have the Magic Creeper, you're not going to have to worry about that because it's going to keep you away from the elements, and that's what's really cool. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, so... When we get down on this, it's still dirty down there. No, watch. Because once you roll this underneath, the spot that you are going to sit on is where you are going to stay. So you're not going to be touching anything that's going to be moving around. So we pull up, up here, and we get underneath, and you get on your spot, 
and see, this is where you're going to stay. So you can still move around, but you are completely protected from the elements. So if you do get a little mud on it, well, I tell you what, all you have to do is just wipe it off. And it's not just for sliding underneath vehicles. I mean, you can use it as a knee pad when it's all rolled up. You just need to check your tires or something like that. And you can not just slide people, but you can slide tires. You can slide big items like out of the back of the truck or the back of an SUV. Find out how you can get a Magic Creeper. Go to their website, magiccreeper.com, and we'll have more performance TV right after this. Performance TV is brought to you by Stage 8 Fasteners, home of the world's best locking header bolt. For more info, go to stage8.com. Strider Straps, live free, tie hard. Car Capsule, protecting vehicles for over 20 years. And by Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. Welcome to the Evaporus Tip of the Week. We've been answering a lot of commonly asked questions that we get, and one of them is, how does vinegar work compared to Evaporust? Vinegar is cheap, and well, is it effective, David? Well, we get that question a lot, and it would seem like vinegar would be a great way to remove rust because it's commonly used, it's in your kitchen, mm -hmm. uh, it's relatively inexpensive on the front end, but vinegar is an acid. It's 5% acetic acid. And, like acids, it causes a lot of problems. It does stink, I'll tell you that much. It does smell bad. We've got this tub with uh, vinegar in it. Here's two horns, identical, came off the same car. This one we did with evapor rust, and you can see everything is completely de-rusted and completely fine. Here's the other one, and we're gonna just set it into the vinegar for a little bit, and then we're gonna look at this part that we've done previously. This is an, an old carburetor and it's got pop metal and aluminum and copper and rust. And you can see the rust is not gone yet, but already the pop metal is falling mm. apart. Yeah. yeah. It eats right into it. You can see it's pretty well etched in, in every area. Yeah, yeah. But if you do this method, isn't it just a one-time use as well? It is. Okay. And uh, so you've got a $3 one-time use or you've got a $20 multi-time use. Okay. So this is actually a better value. It's safer. It smells way better. Yeah. Doesn't have any fumes or smells, Vaporust? No. And let's check on this. It's only been in there a few seconds, but mm -hmm. you can already see it's yeah. starting to eat right into this metal. It really is. So save your time, your money, your effort. Use a Vaporust. Use your vinegar for making pickles. If you have any other questions, visit our website at evaporus.com. Earlier in the show, we met Jeff from Schwartz Performance, talked about the unibodies and how they're all flexible and how you can get something that's better. Well, Dale is here to tell us why some of the finer points of this particular chassis. Dale, we're starting at the rear end. Very important. Uh, the factory didn't do a great job. They were sending cars to the grocery store. You're sending cars either around a road course or just to have a great ride. So why is this better? So, Joe, our entire chassis system is very strong. Um, but not only that, we incorporate a lot of modern suspension technology. So in the case of the rear end here, uh, we use a triangulated four-link rear suspension, which is uh, very simple in design. Uh, doesn't take up a whole lot of space. And we do it with uh, high quality Teflon line spherical rod ends. So I know you got a chance to look earlier. Yeah, I, they move so easily. Yeah. So as compared to a rubber bushing or um, an upgrade of like polyurethane bushings, um, these spherical rod ends, they don't bind up. So when you're going around a corner or when you're you know, going over a bump or something, this suspension style does not bind up. It's, it allows the rear end to kind of articulate a bit. So. And doesn't transfer that energy to the cockpit where you feel it. So people might think the ride is gonna be worse. The ride is actually better. Correct. Since it doesn't bind up and the shock is, uh, you know, allowed to do its job, then yeah, it, it increases the ride quality as well. Now I noticed the quality of the welds and the quality of everything is top notch. Brakes, of course, can help you stop better. But I'm thinking about the person who wants to do this at home, and I'm thinking about the person who doesn't want to do this at home. Like, hey, that's great. I didn't know it existed. Right. But I, I can't do that. Right. We've got a lot of guys that, uh, you know think about buying bolt-ons and you know piecing things together we can give you a, an entire package with 
the rear end, the brakes and everything. And then we perform installations as well as do full car builds too. So, um, you know, if a guy doesn't want to do it at home, doesn't have that type of skill set, whatever, I mean, we can take care of you. Let's go to the front of the car. You know, I've got an F body, I've got a Trans Am, and the first thing you do is you put frame connectors on it because what is the point? The car is flexing all over the place. Right. You can't possibly dial in a suspension if it's flexing. You guys have a much better solution mm -hmm. and what, 29 different chassis you guys offer? Correct, yeah, and we're continuously adding. So the Mustang II street rod style front end, first of all, that was not a great car right. to be duplicating. It was just lightweight. You guys have improved upon that with road course technology. Explain, explain some of the details. Yeah, so my dad, Jeff, he's got more of a road racing background than anything. So uh, we've developed our own suspension design. Um, it's not based off of a Mustang II or improved upon anything. It's our own deal. Uh, so the control arms move very freely. They don't have the rubber bushings or polyurethane bushings that bind up as you saw in the rear suspension. So easy that it moves that way. Yeah, so the shocks are adjustable. Um, so you can get whatever type of ride quality you're looking for. We can change the spring rates depending on the, the engine weight, what kind of driving you're doing with the vehicle. The sway bar also very important. Road course racing, you don't want to roll too much. You want to go flat through the corners and you're making that possible. These big cars weren't designed to do that. You're making it possible. Yeah, we use heavy duty spline sway bars front and back uh, to control that lean. And the rack and pinion also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a power rack and pinion is standard. Um, everything you see here is uh, a standard equipment. I think most people just don't know that this exists for their car. Uh, is that what you find, that people realize, like, oh my goodness, I didn't know this was offered? Yeah, you know about coilover conversions and maybe control arm upgrades, sway bars, uh, but we've taken the next step and come out with an entire chassis uh, with all of the parts that you need to, to do the build front and back. Well, that is great. And I think about needle bearings, think about coilovers, think about all of these elements that just didn't really exist when an E body or a G body or an F body first came around. Right. Well, you guys are doing a great job. For more information, hit their website because they've got a lot going on. Remember, 29 different chassis. And unfortunately, that's all the time we have for Performance TV this week. Hey, if you've got a product that you want featured on this show, email Jeff at masterstv.com. He'll get you all hooked up. That's going to do it. We'll see you next time on Performance TV.